I was Sani Yashabar Rico from Street Scores, and again, it doesn't matter what the commanders do, I'm going to update y'all on every little thing. And the Washington Commanders, well, technically they did it yesterday, but all of the Bobby Wagner stuff, and I ended up busy. But now I'm finally getting to this video. The Washington Commanders have signed all pro special teamer Jeremy Reeves, one of only two 2023 Washington Commanders players that are now 2024 free agents that were re signed. Does he have any safety potential? We're going to take a look at the entire safety position and how it's shaping up and whether Jeremy Reeves even has a real shot at potentially getting to play on defense or is this just a pure special teams guy? We're going to take a look at some potential additional safeties that we may want in the draft. We're going to take a look at maybe some safeties that we want to get in even free agency as well. So before we dive into all of that, make sure you stiff arm that like button, stiff arm the subscription button, and stiff arm the bell next to that subscription button so you get notification each and every time I release an informative and opinionated video just like this one. Again, I keep promising y'all, it doesn't matter how small, how big, concrete fact, or just a rumor, I'm updating y'all on everything Commanders. And it's crazy because I did that whole hour long video breaking down our biggest needs and linebacker, I believe was like number two on the list. And then while I'm in the middle of still working on that video, we signed Bobby Wagner. So now I'm afraid to do another video like that. I want to do an updated version maybe for today as in Thursday, March 14th. But I may wait a little while because who knows? But then again, I'm not going to lie. If me putting in an hour, I mean, well, multiple hours worth of work for an hour long video, if it's like the jinx for us to end up signing a top player at a position that we need, then I'll keep looking stupid all I have to if that's just the way that it goes. But I'm hoping that if I just wait a little while and things calm down, I can finally do like another top needs update. So stay tuned for all of that and let's go ahead and dive into this video. Let's get it. So first off, shouts out my boy Reggie T for the big time donation. He said, thank you for keeping me posted. And hey, man, I appreciate you more. I appreciate you more than you probably appreciate me, man. I, I really mean that. Also, my boy Will, he said, I know it ain't much, man. Everything is a lot. I'm incredibly thankful and grateful for all of the donations man y'all do not understand how much it means to me so i have to thank that i don't care what it is i don't care what you say it means the world to me so i'm happy thank you very much and also my boy ryan for the big time donation and saying for the awesome informative videos shouts out to all of y'all man i really appreciate y'all again if y'all donate and i'm not even live streaming i feel like at the the least i can do is thank y'all in my upcoming video that i end up recording so i really appreciate y'all man for those donations as well all right so the first time i saw it announced it was from jeremy fowler of espn he said source commanders and pro bowl special teamer jeremy reeves have agreed the terms in a two-year deal first of all put some respect on his name because he's not just a pro bowler he's an all pro as well first team all pro as a matter of fact jeremy fowler get it together man you slipping also the two-year deal i love the fact that it's two years this is not just a one year and then he has to worry about coming back from injury and things like that i believe he already said that he's fully healthy but still instead of just coming here to work for one year that at least gives him two years to learn under larry Izzo to potentially get the best out of him before they have to talk contracts again because i am worried about with a new special teams coordinator a lot of changes in this entire organization top to bottom that maybe jeremy reeves again especially coming off of a season ending injury may not be like at his best until maybe sometime in the middle of year one of his contract or whatever and i want him to i'm happy that he's at least getting a second year of he'll be around to prove what he's worth and potentially get that next contract but I just want to point out the fact that the no 2023 commanders have been re-signed streak is over. Anybody that was like a 2023 commander that is now a 2024 unrestricted free agent up until the point that we signed Jeremy Reeves, we had signed none of those guys. We went like 12 or 13 straight signings of guys from the outside. And then Jeremy Reeves was the first of only two guys that we re-signed from the 2023 commander's roster. But John Com reported after the signing, 
was announced that Jeremy Reeves was one of the very few commanders that were 2024 unrestricted free agents that were expected to return to Washington. So whatever he's heard from being plugged into the organization, he said that basically this Jeremy Reeves thing was kind of expected. It was on the way. It just took some time. And I don't know if people noticed this, but Jeremy Reeves and Jamison Crowder are not Rivera guys. So these aren't even Rivera guys that have been re-signed so far. Technically, that was those were Jay Gruden guys, actually. So still technically, no Rivera guys have been re-signed to this 2024 Commanders team yet. If ever. That's crazy. Remember, even three of them in Charles Leno, Logan Thomas, and Nick Gates, there were Rivera guys got cut. So Rivera right now is zero and three. Jay Gruden has more guys re-signed to the 2024 Commanders than Rivera does. That's actually really crazy when you really think about it. And what's really noteworthy, first of all, that means Casimir Allen, Mason Brooks, Jamison Crowder were also probably priorities to this new regime as well. I feel like that's something that we need to take note of because those are guys they went and got and brought back as soon as possible. Those are the first four guys that were technically re-signed by the commanders. And again, Casimir Allen and Mason Brooks don't really count as a re-signing because they were practice squad players. They weren't a part of like the actual 53 man roster. So I mean, I think that's noteworthy in itself. And then secondly, the way John Com said what he said, it sounds like we have maybe a few more 2023 commanders on the way that will end up being re-signed. If it's up to me, me personally, I would like to bring back Cornelius Lucas as a backup swing tackle and a colleague Hudson just because I simply like his potential and I'm interested in seeing what this coaching staff could get out of him because he started to show a little of a, a big amount of growth towards the end of the 2022 season that last game he played and then the more he played towards the second half and the end of this past 2023 season he started to get better and better as well i'm curious to see what this coaching staff could get out of him especially as like a coverage linebacker type of guy and a guy that you send at the quarterback with some talent to him so i'd be interested in that and cornelius lucas wise i feel like that would be really important because first of all we just need a backup swing tackle i feel like every roster in the nfl should have a guy like that but also if we're potentially looking to sign like a top tier tackle all of those guys have injury histories if we're talking about tyron smith david Bakhtari, or trent brown either of those guys all have injury histories so it would be nice to have a dependable guy that you know can go in there and start that tackle for you maybe a game or two if they have to because those other elite potential blockers that are available right now that we may try to go get are fairly injury prone. Also, going back to Jeremy Reeves, I'm really excited about this man. He's only 27. He was named first team all pro just back in 2022 and 2023. He tore his ACL in week five. That was last season. So that's probably the only reason he wasn't all pro again. And he's had six seasons all with the Washington Commanders undrafted well technically with the washington redskins then the football team then the commanders he's been around that long he's been on and off the team practice squad all of that type of stuff he was technically originally signed to the eagles as a practice squad player but before that offseason even ended we ended up picking him up from the eagles so they didn't even have like a full offseason with him even though they were technically the first team to sign him out of college out of i believe south alabama but either way, I do want to point out these things. Shouts out to Nikki Javala because, man, this guy's story is very interesting, man. Undrafted, cut multiple times, bounced on and off the practice squad, finally made the 53-man roster in 2022, earns first-team All-Pro and Pro Bowl in that season. Stop playing with him, man. Also, shouts out to Ben Standig for this update because he tweeted, it took a minute to wrap up negotiations with the 2022 Pro Bowl special teamer. Again, all pro. Why are we forgetting that, man? Special team selection is sticking around. Also gives the commanders another safety to go with Chin, Martin, Forrest, and Butler. And I want to really emphasize the fact that he said it took a minute to wrap up negotiations. So it sounds like the commanders have been on this for a while now. Like they were really trying to bring them back. And it just took this long for them to finally reach numbers that they both mutually liked. But it sounds like they were trying to bring them back even before we actually got the announcement that they tried to sound like maybe this was in the works before the legal tampering period even started is basically my point also shouts out to john con for bringing this up it's quite amazing for a player to survive three coaching regimes jay gruden ron Rivera, and now dan quinn under adam peters 
while with one organization. I mean, that is weird, though. It's easier for guys to go from one team to another than for, this, for them to stay on the same team with entire regime changes, particularly when he was considered an undersized safety who spent a lot of time on the practice squad. That's what Reeves has done. Rare. And I completely agree with John Com right there. Big props to him. And so just an update. So far, the Commanders' additions are Austin Eckler, running back, linebacker Bobby Wagner, linebacker Frankie LeVu, center Tyler Biedish, tight end Zach Ertz, edge rusher Dorrance Armstrong, edge rusher Dante Fowler Jr., and edge rusher Cleveland Farrell, guard Nick Allegretti, safety Jeremy Chin, quarterback Marcus Mariota, kicker Brandon McManus, long safety Tyler Ott, and then also returner technically but also depth wide receiver Jamison Crowder and I'm gonna do a whole separate video on him as well after this one but also just to go back and look at his journey and how he ended up becoming an all pro just real quick and this comes directly from the Washington Commanders website and is this comes literally from the year that he won the Pro Bowl and they were breaking down the story behind it. The last Washington player to be a first team all pro was Brandon Sheriff for his performance during the 2020 season. Prior to that, it was punter Matt Turk. He was the last player to be named to the first team all pro and for the Washington anything, Redskins, whatever, since 1996, up until the point that it was Brandon Sheriff, which was 2020, up until the point that it was jeremy reeves in 2022 and i want you to notice that two of those three guys are special teams teamers you know i love jeremy reeves and i appreciate matt turk for what he did for us but hey man brandon sheriff is the only guy since at furthest back at, i mean at the very soonest 1996 to be a non-special teamer to make the first team all pro for the breaking and gold and we gotta turn that around please adam peters dan quinn eugene shin and all of those guys please come and change that situation for us also reeves who has been with the team since 2018 proved himself as one of the league's best special teams players that last season 2022 season after earning a spot on the commander's 53 man roster for the first time in his career he finished the season with a career high 33 tackles 17 of which came as a special teams player he finished second in the league of terms of special teams tackles only behind san francisco 49ers george odom and he was still voted first team all pro over him Reeves' story has continued to grow since earning a spot on the active roster in September. He was voted to his first Pro Bowl as a primary special teams player in December, and then he was, after that, voted first team all pro in the NFLPA's version of the accolade. At the time of his Pro Bowl selection, Reeves led the league in special teams tackles and led a punt return coverage unit that ranked fourth in the NFL that season. I don't know what happened after that. I mean, I know Jeremy Reeves got hurt in 2023, but our special teams were bad last year. Reeves' selection marks the first time that Washington has sent a special teamer to the Pro Bowl since Lorenzo Alexander in 2012. That's also bad history as well, man. And we shouldn't have to dig that far back for us to do things like that. Sending guys to the Pro Bowl in certain positions, just having anybody as a first team all proer, that's crazy. Now getting back to Jeremy Reeves, what about his chances of being a safety? We know he's a really good special teamer, an all pro for a reason as of just 2022, that wasn't that long ago. But how about him potentially being a safety? Well, if you want to go back to his 2020 year where he had the highest safety grade he's ever had in his career, he had an 81.2 overall grade, a 68.1 run defense grade a 83.3 pass rush grade and a 76.9 coverage grade that's insane man those were like elite top 15 safeties in the nfl grades right there but that was back in 2020 that was when he had to come into the rotation due to injuries and the commander season was pretty much over so they were like hey man let's just might as well throw him out there that boy was out there for 96 run defense snaps four pass rushing snaps and 163 coverage snaps that's not a lot of snaps overall but that's probably i believe the most he's ever had in a season in his career outside of special teams that man had 18 solo tackles eight assisted four stops one sack and only two missed tackles along with an interception he had a passer rating allowed of 38.2 so my point is if you could potentially get 2020 safety version of jeremy reeves out of him again and put him in situations to win like that maybe he can contribute as a safety he is very undersized but hey man 2020 showed that there's some flashes there there's something that maybe when in doubt that's something we can develop and work on again he's only 27 so 
Dan Quinn coming in as head coach, Joe Wood Jr. coming in as your defensive coordinator, and Jason Simmons coming in as your defensive passing game coordinator, and Tim Donatel as your defensive backs coach. Y'all may have something here that y'all could work with. I'm not saying that you definitely do, but just keep that in mind. That 2020 season, according to Pro Football Focus's grades, if he played enough snaps, he would have been ranked like a top 15 safety out of the entire NFL, which is pretty crazy. And, but when you're looking at the commander's roster, you already have Jeremy Chin, who is going to play more like an in-the-box role, kind of like a hybrid linebacker. Then you also have Percy Butler, and then you have Derek Forrest. And then that's the end of the list right there for safeties. And then you throw Jeremy Reeves in there as the fourth guy, kind of technically the third, because, again, Jeremy Chin is going to be somewhat of like a strong safety, hybrid linebacker play in the star position. Or most of y'all know it as like the Buffalo nickel that Ron Rivera, you know, he brought that name over. And even Joe Wood Jr. reiterated that he used the word Buffalo nickel in his press conference. And even though his press conference was like perfect top to bottom, that was the one thing that scared a couple of people. But that position is alive and well on this team. So Jeremy Reeves, I mean, Jeremy Chin, my fault, technically a safety, but he won't play at like a safety that much. So technically, we only have like three real safeties on the team, to be completely honest. So is it actually possible for him to actually be a part of the real safety rotation in a game? Or is he just a pure special teamer? Like, will Joe Witt Jr. even have him as a part of his arsenal in the secondary? Or is this just a pure Larry Izzo special teams coordinator weapon? I don't, I'm not exactly sure we'll have to see, but no matter what it is, I'm super happy for Jeremy Reeves. He tweeted as soon as like it was announced that he got signed. He said, Commanders fans, I'm glad to be coming back home. I got unfinished business. And yes, you do. Let's get it. And then he typed in LFG. Y'all know what that means with the heart emoji. I'm super excited for him, man. I was really rooting for him to get re-signed, especially after listening to that John Com interview that he had a few days ago on John Com's podcast. I was already rooting for him, but then to see like his point of view and how optimistic and upbeat and happy he was, he's just such a good guy, man. I'm very happy to just have him around, even for like when the social media team from training camp and things like that just upload random clips of showing players' personalities. He's always had one of the brightest personalities, and just it's just is genuinely a great guy and really fun man but at the end of the day as far as him playing safety on defense even with everything that i provided to you i just want to let you know that i doubt it and i think they're still going to attack safety somewhere this offseason like first of all signing justin simmons is not necessarily very likely but it's also not fully ruled out especially again since Jeremy Chin is going to play most of his role somewhere around the line of scrimmage like a hybrid linebacker so we do technically still need safety a little bit and also with nine picks in the draft I wouldn't be surprised if we use one of those middle ones on a talented safety as well so if you're talking about free agency wise you have Jamal Adams out there I already mentioned Justin Simmons and why he would be a perfect fit for what this defense needs right now because are you willing to put your trust in Percy Butler and Derek Forrest and those guys I mean technically you have Quan Martin but I see him as like a slot corner I mean I guess he can move into like a permanent strong safety role I guess so technically you do have four safeties even outside of Jeremy Chin including Jeremy Reeves but he's gonna be so versatile it's kind of hard to just like I, it's hard for me to consider Jeremy Chin a safety it's kind of hard for me to do that for Quan Martin but it, of course we just got to see what's gonna happen once Dan Quinn and Joe Wood Jr. get their hands on these guys because maybe Quan Martin does just become a permanent strong safety I was thinking that Quan Martin would be more like a star position more around the line of scrimmage type of thing just like how Cameron Curl was a couple of years ago I, I see his career trajectory potentially ending up being something like Cameron Curl where again like a couple of years ago around the line of scrimmage and then this past season Cameron Curl was more so primarily just like a pure strong safety and was definitely further back away from the line of scrimmage more often than he ever was his previous years with the commander since we drafted him i could see Quan martin potentially ending up in a situation like that especially now that we brought in jeremy chin without jeremy chin i would have assumed that he would have been doing what jeremy chin is probably gonna end up doing but now that jeremy chin's here i'm expecting him to take over that star position maybe Quan martin moves to strong safety but again i'm not 100 sure so those are two question marks right there then you have two guys that we know for a fact are safeties in Derek forrest and percy butler and even though both of those guys are pretty versatile i see them as more free safeties rangy free safeties if anything and then you also have jeremy reeves back there but again going back to free agency you have jamal adams justin simmons buddha baker eddie jackson quandre diggs micah hyde tracy walker marcus may von bell j ron kirst 
a, um, ex Cowboys, even though I doubt they bring him because the exact role that they would have brought him here to do, it would have been the Jeremy Chin role that he's getting, the role that I thought Quan Martin was originally getting. Kind of the same thing with Jamal Adams, who's already injury prone. He, he would have been that same role as well. But there's some guys that fill in the need, most notably like a Justin Simmons for exactly what I feel like we're missing in the secondary potentially. Unless you fully believe that Quan Martin is ready to step up and then you believe in Derek Forrest or Percy Butler to start at free safety for you. If not, then maybe we need to look at free agency, maybe a Justin Simmons or maybe even the draft. And then draft wise, some would argue that there isn't a single safety worth even going in the first round. But there's still some pretty good safety talent in this draft. You have Tyler Newbin, who, if you're looking at NFL draft buzz, people are projecting him average-wise. If you're taking into account like all of the different big boards around the internet, like Draft Network and NFL draft buzz themselves and Pro Football Focus, ESPN, Bleacher Report, anywhere you can look, he has like the average of where those guys are ranked based on all of those big boards combined. Tyler Newbin... The highest rated safety is projected to go 44th in the draft, potentially 44.7 when you do the actual averages. But that basically adds up to the 44th or 45th pick, which is in the second round. Then Javon Bullard, my Georgia Bulldog, technically, arguably the second best safety, 55.9 rank. And then they have Cameron Kitchens above Javon Bullard, but especially according to average rank. But NFL Draft Buzz actually likes Javon Bullard more than Cameron Kitchens. But either way, he's projected to be a 50th pick technically or at big board wise. Then you have Jaden Hicks, 70th. Kalen Bullock, 67th. I mean, Renardo Green, 79th. Cole Bishop, 83rd. James Williams from Miami, 104th. I mean, there's a lot of options out there, but none of these guys are projected to go in the first round. And Tyler Newbin, who's projected to potentially go the highest, will not potentially even get picked to like the 44th pick is what it's looking like. So we can probably snag a pretty good safety sometime in the draft is my main point. But just back to Jeremy Reeves, I do want to point out the fact that he's an all pro for a reason. And at the end of the day, they're going to ask him to do that. And I'm expecting him to do it at a very high level, whether he gets a chance to play safety or not. He's here to be a special teamer. That's why we signed him for on a two year contract. Larry Izzo probably loves this guy. He's probably super excited about getting him. He brought in his own long snapper. He brought in his own kicker. But you notice that Larry Izzo made sure he brought back Jeremy Reeves from the old regime and Jamison Crowder, which, again, I'll talk about in another video. But that speaks loudly, the fact that he brought in outside guys for those things but wanted to bring back Jeremy Reeves to do that. So... I think that's a big enough compliment in itself. Again, whether he gets a chance to play safety or not for Joe Witt Jr., I know he's going to ball out for Larry Izzo at the end of the day. But yeah, man, that's the end of this video. Please get in the comment section. Let me know if you feel about everything discussed in this video. Please still follow that like button, still follow the subscription button, still follow the bell next to that subscription button so you get notification each and every time I release an informative and opinionated video just like this one. I know it is a special teams video, so I know most people won't be excited about it. I know most people will not care but i did want to make sure that i got this done because again i promised y'all i'm gonna do videos on everybody we signed so i don't care what's going on i'm definitely going to make sure i let y'all know and of course shouts out i can't believe i waited this long to remember to shout out the cash apps i'm probably just gonna have to edit it towards the beginning of the video like i did the other time so first off shouts out my boy reggie t for the big time donation he said, thank you for keeping me posted. And hey, man, I appreciate you more. I appreciate you more than you probably appreciate me, me man. I, I, I really mean that. Also, my boy Will, he said, I know it ain't much, man. Everything is a lot. I'm incredibly thankful and grateful for all of the donations man y'all do not understand how much it means to me so i have to thank that i don't care what it is i don't care what you say it means the world to me so i'm happy thank you very much and also my boy ryan for the big time donation and saying for the awesome informative videos shouts out to all of y'all man i really appreciate y'all again if y'all donate and I'm not even live streaming, I feel like at the, the least I can do is thank y'all in my upcoming video that I end up recording. So I really appreciate y'all, man, for those donations as well. Y'all have been going crazy in the cash app since we the legal tampering period started and we've been signing all of these guys. I really appreciate y'all. So shouts out to all of them. And again, if y'all donate to the cash app in between videos, I'll make sure I will thank y'all in the following video. And also, man, be on the lookout because I am working on a live stream, especially like a call-in show live 
live stream where y'all can call in you voice your opinions on everything going on it may be sunday stay tuned that's kind of like a loose idea right now and i want to make sure i can confirm that day and a certain time for that day so stay tuned for the call in show live stream so we can wrap up everything the commanders have done so far this off season everybody we've cut everybody we've signed everybody we've re-signed all of that type of stuff and then of course man i really appreciate y'all again man make sure you leave a like on the way out i'd really appreciate it and let me know how you feel about us bringing back jeremy reeves are you as happy as i am or is this just like news that you don't care about just simply because it's a special teamer let me know all of that man i'm gonna catch y'all later i appreciate y'all i'm out oh.